Everywhere you look, AI is taking over. We're all doomed! Creativity's dead! But here's the truth. AI isn't killing design, it's saving it. And it's helping designers continue to do the things that we're really good at and assist in the things that we're normally terrible at. In this video, I'm gonna show you the AI tools that I use in my design career to spark more creativity, reclaim more of my time, and just be a better designer. So why am I getting in with the AI, getting in with the robots? just because they're useful. I have strengths, I'm quite visual. Probably all you designers out there, you live in the visual world and that's your strength. My weakness is a lot of the parts that AI is really good at. The other things that are really good at is the monotonous things. I kind of half miss them, but when there's time crunches and stress, all the monotony of design is something that AI is helping me out with and kind of enabling me to do more of the stuff that I enjoy. That's why I'm getting involved. And why all the hype around AI tools? It's because you can't be left behind. We're at a time now where like books went to the printing press and paste up went to computers. We are as designers now on a kind of a forefront of a new technology that you can either ignore and be left behind or like me, use it like a co-pilot to become just a better designer. All right, let me show you the AI tools that I'm using to supercharge my design career. The first tool is ChatGPT. Now, why this is so valuable for me is that I don't do words good. I know what I want to come across, so I can do things like, hey ChatGPT, you're Alex Hamozi. And then I ask it questions. Give me five Facebook ads using Alex's marketing language and ChatGPT will give them to me. And I'm like, I'm a genius. Same with contracts. It's kind of a necessary evil in the design world. What's this all about? Standard form of contract? Don't talk to me about contracts, Wonka. I use them myself. They're strictly for suckers. Somebody sends you a contract, you're like, eh, they're probably fine. Okay, you can give it to ChatGPT and say, hey, is there anything concerning in here? And they'll give back amends and you can go back to them and say, hey, I like it except for X, Y, and Z. So I use ChatGPT to write my contracts as well. I tell it like my non-negotiables, the things I'm flexible on and ask it questions about the contract. Like, does this feel too one-sided? What are some things I might give up to make it more balanced? It's a great way to get started with contracts. One of my most fun projects at the moment that I'm using AI for is I want to build a color utility app. You've seen in lots of my courses that bring around laptop I often send you off to many different sites for kind of color trends color combinations so I, I want to build my own I've got all these ideas about how it could be the best one ever I'm using it for like the UX design research phase like hey ChatGPT, give me 10 features that should be in a color utility website I needed brands that have changed in the last 12 months and changed the color scheme ChatGPT name 10 well-known uh, consumer facing brands that have had a rebrand in the last 12 months list them out show me the new logo show me the old ones what do you think it's amazing when i was building out the site i needed uh i wanted to do celebrity colors i said chatgpt pick 10 influential pop culture figures give me color schemes that kind of match their personalities and it gave it to me now some of you might be saying like are you actually creating this thing or is ai creating this thing what i would say is i would be doing those things but i probably do half of it and it would take 10 times as long. That is probably the difference between me doing it without AI support and me being kind of enabled by this like, chat GPT. The next tool I'm using loads is Photoshop. So there's generative fill, generative extend, generative image. That's kind of what they're using for image generation. Who remembers, like if you're one of the people who has spent countless hours, like me, headphones on, duplicating sky because somebody needed some text up there or trying to hide a cruddy path with like extra grass. Okay, and it took you half an hour, an hour, two hours. Generative Phil can do it better. I hate admitting that because I was pretty good at it. Better than I could even do in seconds rather than hours. And that's hard for me because like I liked doing it. I was really good at it. I knew the tricks of it, but I need to kind of let that go because that's not the value that I bring as a designer. My value is bringing conceptual concepts to the work and thought provoking. And like, those are the things that bring value to the client, not how good the grass is. So AI is good at not just like replacing sky and grass, like let's say this one here from our Photoshop advanced course, like this hiker here, the creative direction is like, why isn't she wearing socks? I'm like, okay, need to add socks. And what I normally do, 
pre-AI is my process would be like, all right, me and creative director, let's look through socks online of things that we can use and borrow, okay? And like, okay, we like this one, but it's the wrong bit. We're not, we can't see this bit, you know? And you'd find it and you'd just lump it on there and you'd try and stretch it round. What I really wanted was it to match the tone of the image. I needed it to match the angles and the lighting. You can see it just add socks, pick different versions of socks until you find one that everyone's happy with. And one of the big changes for AI and my kind of workflow is stock photography. Photoshop has something called Photoshop Generate you just start typing stuff up, you keep hitting enter and it keeps giving you new versions, different angles. You can tell it things like, I want the cam I want it to be a bird's eye view. I want it to use a 50 mil prime lens. I want it to be sunset. And it will keep generating like full stock images that I can use that are commercially usable, which is the big thing with uh, Photoshop that I can use it in my work. So stock photography, exactly how you want it. So the next thing I'm using a lot is kind of a similar feature, generative tools, but it's in Adobe Illustrator. I'm making things like super graphics, kind of big graphics for covers, for websites, full illustrations, uh, logo, kind of logo ideation at this stage, uh, icons, and I'm using the generative features to kind of recolor them as well. And see, so the last thing I was doing is that color app. I want the um, app to be able to you pick colors and this graphic recolor with it. So I wanted something kind of abstract that was kind of design related and cool. I prompted AI, I wanted particular features, I gave it some sample colors, and then I got to a point where I'm like, I kind of know what it needs to look like. So I gave it a sample image as well, a reference image. And that's where it pulled kind of like from the uh, image I found online and kind of used it for uh, both composition and for kind of like style cues. What I would have done in the past is I would have gone to a stock library site, something like Envato, okay, and gone through and just kind of like doom scrolled, but for creative elements. Everybody done that? Yeah. <laughs> and kind of like found something that was close enough. You'd end up at a good point. You'd end up with the thing that you kind of wanted. Then you spend time in Illustrator kind of like tidying it up and getting it how you want. So I end up probably in a very similar place, but it's just the time saving. That is the big kind of like unlock for this. It's just like getting to a point quickly and probably those style references. That's the thing is like often when you find stock imagery, you're like compositionally it's right, but style stylistically it's wrong. And then you find something stylistically right, but compositionally it's wrong. Whereas AI, I can tell it to be this kind of composition. Like I want this and this in the back and this in the front. I want it to be shot from above, below. It's pretty amazing. And now who does this affect? Potentially you could say it's the illustrator, but this job was never going to have an illustrator involved. I don't think anybody loses in this one. Maybe the stock library site, but definitely not an illustrator. No illustrators were harmed in the making of this graphic. All right, and the next one is reference images. It's kind of baked into some of the generative uh, image making that we've talked about before in Photoshop and Illustrator. It needs its own space here because it is such a big unlock from AI. When you're doing brand work, it's often about consistency and not just consistency across images, but it's consistency as it relates to the brand. What's more on brand than using the actual logo and saying, I want this image, but I want you to do it in this logo style. And you just kind of like, here you go, I'm blown away. Like you can see how it like references the logo and it's got parts in there. And it's like, there's just no way that I could have done that on my own. Definitely not as quickly. And the nice thing about this is that I can get to the client real quickly and say, what do you think of this idea? I can sell it into the client in this mood board phase. And especially when the budget's there, when the budget's not there, we're gonna be using AI. But when I'm working with larger clients who want more than just stuff dumped on their lap, working with an illustrator is one of those special parts of the design uh, process that won't go away because it gives it soul. You'll end up with very similar artwork potentially, or at least the same directional artwork, but it'll have life. People will believe it, they'll love it, they'll know the artist. It comes with a lot more, I don't know, soul. So what I would have done before is I'd have to sell it to the client beforehand because there's budget constraints, right? I'd have to get them to try and imagine it and I'd need a very good client or stakeholder or creative director kind of to see the vision. I'd have to believe the vision as well. I have to find the right illustrator. It's doable and it's been done and I've done it. It's just trickier when you can't see it. There's a lot more faith in the process this just gets us into a really kind of clear path a lot 
quicker and it's just super useful. The next one is Premiere Pro and you're like, hey, it's not a graphic design tool. You probably also know that you end up using it. Video is just part of the design landscape. And this is kind of one of the new big tool unlocks for me. Um, it's called Generative Extend. It does exactly what it sounds like. It extends video. And it's for those times, those so, so many times where, especially when you're shooting your own, you know, stock video is always nicely tidied up. Okay, but it's the bit where your talent, this handsome guy goes, all right, goodbye everyone. And then starts picking his nose. You can see here, it can just kind of like magics up new video. That'll work for stock video as well. If you've got a clip and it's only this long, you can just drag it longer and just adds more video of the same thing. Also, uh, the remix feature. Who's tried to cut audio to video and you're like, it's not long enough, it's too long. Okay, what you can do now is remix in Premiere Pro and just say, I need this track and I just need it to be this long. What I used to do in the past, you might have done it as well, is you just found a beat and you cut it, and you know, grabbed another beat, cut that and just like duplicated it a few times and pray that whoever the musician who made it is didn't hear your like, horrible remix. Now, if you've edited a video before, you know what this, what problems this can solve. You probably, like what you want to do is tell an amazing story, but you end up spending a lot of your time editing out like bad cuts. You end up kind of trying to hide things with B-roll where B-roll shouldn't probably be, or like jump cut it here, or maybe using this other take that doesn't quite work, but uh, it's good enough. You're actually covering up stuff to, you know, you're trying to like mitigate problems rather than making this thing the best it can be. And that's what I think some of this generative work in Premiere Pro can do. It can just extend the time you have working on storytelling and less on covering up bad stuff. So I've talked about how great AI is. It's not great for everything. The things that I'm not using AI for that it's terrible at is anything that requires some sort of compositional layout. And it can work with templates, but we all know templates have a template kind of feel to it. So things like Figma, InDesign and Illustrator, where you're doing type imagery, composition, that's where at the moment, if you're using it, it's just, it can't seem to work with type. That's the thing where I don't even start with AI. I just kind of start with my own kind of traditional design kind of elements and compositions, doing the work myself. That's the thing that at the moment, AI isn't particularly great at. It's great at like individual elements within a page, but not so good at the whole page composition. And when I say page, I mean app, websites, printed page, that's where it's, not working very well. So is AI coming to kill us all as designers? No, it is just another tool, not a weapon trying to kill you. It's a hammer that you can use to build stuff. The trouble and the caution is, is that there'll be a period of time where everything looks like a nail that you want to smack with this new hammer. Doink. Like the lens flare. Remember when you learned lens flare in Photoshop and everything needed a little lens flare? We'll go through that phase, but we'll come out and it'll just be one of the things that we use as creatives. So my advice to you is that if you are worried about AI, it's kind of big, but not if you just take one little bite. So go and figure out one little thing that it might do that I've done through this list, your own thing. Because what you'll find is that for me, it helps me with language so much more. It helps me some some quickening up work as well in ideas, but really it's helping me with language. You might be great at language. You might be great with words and composing sentences. Me, not so good. So it is that for me. What you might find for you, it is something else. There is this other part of AI that is the thing. I'm not showing you what you should be doing. I'm just showing you what I'm using and might spark inspiration for you. And go figure that out. Try just a little bit, a couple of different things, and I think you'll find that the, they won't all land, but a couple of them will. There's gonna be a time where, at the moment, we're at the kind of like beginning of AI getting involved in our jobs, and there's still a lot of time to kind of get out in front of this, but I think the people who do now will have an advantage. You'll understand it a little bit more to, than the next person jumping in a year from now. It's not a rush. The, you know, doomsday's not coming. The meteor is not gonna hit the graphic design world. But the people who start using a little bit of it now understand the roots, how it's going. You're gonna be that more valuable person when it does become the norm, when everyone expects you to have computer skills that is where you need to already be upskilled and not be sitting back hoping that they'll upskill you and not fire you. Now for the people that like refuse to do AI, the trouble is if you want to be anti-AI, you need to understand AI. You need to understand what you are not. 
You need to know what the new way is so that you can define what the old way is. There will be a place for you. That is 100% what's gonna happen. It always does. Being blissfully unaware, I think you'll just be in the yucky middle. You wanna be one side or the other. And if you want a kind of a list of the things that I've been talking about and kind of like connects to some of the videos that I've kind of shown, I've got courses on a lot of this software, so you can check that out. There'll be a link uh, in the description for that. And if you're like, oh, I didn't realize Photoshop or Illustrator or a lot of the Adobe software can do any of this and you do wanna upskill, check out any of my courses. Okay, bring your own laptop. There'll be a link for that in the description as well. Now this is kind of how I'm using it, but I'd love to hear what you're using. Like. I'm always looking for like, we're at that time of this technology where there are so many discoverable new things that you're like, I didn't realize I could do that. So let me know in the comments, like the things that you're using it for, or if you're on the other side and you're like, actually, this is the reason why this is no good. Let me know in the comments, you go check them out. This is kind of a new thing. It's interesting to see where everybody's landing, how they're using it. All right, that is it. Uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel for more, or come join me in a course at bringerandlaptop.com. And yeah, get AI in your life. Bye now. Relax and let an AI do the work. You keep waving, AI. <laughs> I'm gonna sit here and drink coffee. Ah, living the dream. Oh, hang on. Ah, whoop, living the dream. <laughs> Bye.